What's up guys, Tyler Casey here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to balance and set up your Weevil S, just like this. If you guys didn't see my first video, make sure to check it out. I shoot a run and gun music video on the Weevil S, had a lot of fun with it, and I show you all the cool settings and modes that it has. Today I'm gonna to walk you through on balancing it. I'm gonna be balancing my GH5 with the Sigma 18 to 35. Pretty heavy setup, so this one should be pretty fun to do. Before I get started, make sure to drop a like down below so other people can find this video. So once you get the Weevil, obviously you're gonna want to screw on the tripod because this is the best way to balance it when you have the tripod on the bottom so you can set it like this. And then you're gonna wanna unlock all these right here. And if you don't have the quick release plate on, you can easily just click that on right here. You just unscrew that right there. And then you just push this pin in and then you pop it off. This is gonna be easy for you to take your camera on and off the gimbal, and you're not gonna to have to rebalance it that much. I did try and put my own quick release plate on it, and I kinda of got some weird warpy motion, so I haven't done that again. I haven't put another quick release plate on top of this one, um, just because I like having my own quick release plate, but this thing isn't that bad, and I actually do enjoy using it. Before I, start, before I start balancing, I wanna let you guys know that it's important to have a balanced gimbal because this is gonna make your battery life longer and it's also gonna give you smoother shots and the gimbal's just gonna work overall better. Make sure you have a well-balanced gimbal. It's really important, so let's get into it. First, I'm gonna put the quick release plate on the bottom of the camera. Um, I'm just gonna use like a coin. You can use a screwdriver. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna screw that on here. If your lens setup is really long, you can also put on the plate riser. You can also put on the riser so it makes your camera a little higher up so it doesn't hit the eyepiece. If you are hitting the eyepiece, make sure to put that piece on. There's also the front, uh, there's all the, also the front lens holder. I'm not gonna put that on. I don't really see the need for it. Um, it balances perfectly fine for me, but you guys can put that on. So before you balance, make sure you have your battery in the camera. Make sure you have the SD card you're gonna be using and make sure you have the lens and the lens cap off. Uh, you want the lens on, but you want it to be the exact same weight that it's gonna be when you're actually out shooting. Uh, I would take any neck straps off. Um, these things, they're not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna plop this on the camera. Um, and what I like to do actually is I actually do like to lock the axes. So I'm gonna lock that one. And I'm gonna, which one do I need to unlock? I think I need to unlock these top ones. So yeah, I want that one unlocked, but then I wanna unlock, where's it at? Sometimes I have trouble finding them. I wanna unlock this one, and then I'm gonna relock it so we're locked just like that. It's not moving, you can see that right there. So now, I can actually relock this one if I want. Let's do that actually. So it stays just like that. So it's super easy to put an unbalanced camera on. And then I'm just pushing the pin and there we go. And I could feel that that lock is definitely holding this in place. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide this all the way back because I know it's unbalanced just so um, when I unlock it, it doesn't flop forward. So now I'm gonna unlock this first one and we can see we still need to go a lot further back. So I'm using this trigger right here on the side and it's this lever and that lets you slide the camera back and forth. So I'm still tilting forward quite a bit. So I'm actually just gonna pop this off again and I think I need to readjust where my camera is. So I need to bring the camera all the way back on the quick release plate. Now we can see it's swinging backwards a little bit and hitting here. So I can just unlock that and slide forward a little bit and boom there we go so that's the first one that you have to balance and we're tilting forward a little bit so it's really just playing with it and getting it right you just have to be patient with it but you will get it it's super easy on bigger lens setups i mean it's super easy on lighter setups this is probably a pretty heavy setup for this gimbal but i figured i'd show you guys a harder setup than an easier one there we go That looks decent. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock another axis. So I'm gonna unlock this one and I'm gonna unlock the spinny one. So when we tilt forward, it's instantly just turning. Actually, we're gonna do the left to right. So we can see it's falling super fast to the left. 
So I'm gonna do this little hinge on the bottom and I'm actually gonna slide to the right. And I'm gonna do that one. So everything's unlocked right now. And that's actually pretty good. So I'm gonna tighten that. They made it really easy to tighten these before. Uh, most of them were just like these little knobs like on front and it's, it's not that fun. So it's going a little bit to the right now. So I'm gonna slide just a few centimeters. There we go, that looks good. Try and tighten it without moving it. And boom, look at that. So next we wanna do, we're gonna tilt it down and we see that it wants to swing down. So we don't want that. So we can actually unscrew this knob right up front here and we can, it went all the way down to the bottom. So that's not enough. We want it to just stay still when we tilt it forward. So it can go a little bit further down. And you just wanna play with it. You just wanna put it to one extreme to the other and find the sweet spot right in between. So I think I need to go a little higher up. So one thing I forgot to mention is that if you have a GH5, make sure to flip out your screen uh, before you do this because that's gonna help with the balancing. So the next access that you wanna do is this one right here. And basically the way you do that is if you turn the camera like this, it should not spin that much. So I would really just play around with it and see, go from one extreme to the other. So I went all the way that way. Still spinning just a little bit. Move it all the way to the end. We can already see that's pretty bad. So I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get it. It's pretty decent. It's not spinning like crazy. Um, whereas like usually you'll do it and it'll just rotate super fast. So make sure to play around with that. Next, I'm gonna plug in the camera with this. Um, this help, this lets you be able to hit record and change settings right on the gimbal. So that's pretty cool. Uh, on the GH5, I didn't have to go into the settings. Some cameras you might have to go and click remote operation. Uh, it pops up on my screen and I just click the little remote button. It lets me access the settings on the gimbal. So I'm going to plug that in. This is a USB-C to, uh, just like the regular micro USB, uh, mount. So I'm clicking that in and then I'm going to run this cable up and around actually down and under into the USB-C. Cool. So now that that's in, we can actually power on the camera. So the power on button is here on the side and I'm going to turn that on. So one cool thing about that this gimbal does, so let's say I probably wasn't perfectly balanced. It's hard to balance this giant gimbal. So we can actually come down here and we can go into motor and we can go to auto and to navigate the menus basically um right the right button is to go into left is to wait let's go back yeah left is to go back we want to go up to auto and now it's going to do auto tune so auto tune is basically gonna uh basically just see like how hard the motors need to work it's, it's going to configure the size of the camera it's going to work and it says check okay so now it is level so let's see if this works Let's switch over here. Let's switch over on the side to pan follow mode. So look at that balance gimbal. Um, so there's a trigger on the side. So that's pan follow mode. So you can just pan. You can't tilt. If you want to tilt and pan, you hold this trigger button down right there and we can tilt and pan. Look at that. Let's say you want to get things level again. All you have to do is just double tap that and the gimbal will go back level. So that's a really nice feature. Uh, if you hit this function button on the side and hold it, you get uh, go mode. So this is just super quick, quick pans, quick tilts for fast movement. So that's a pretty cool feature that they threw in there. Um, another one is a uh, POV mode. So you just tap that once and then you get the cool POV mode. So like I showed on the video, we can tilt any way you go, it'll go in like a little POV type fashion. So that's a pretty fun one. Before you turn on the gimbal, make sure you undo everything. Um, and then if we double click POV mode, we get vortex mode. And pretty much you can just hold down this little joystick and it's gonna spin. So it's doing vortex mode with this giant setup. So you can see how strong this gimbal is. I'm gonna weigh this camera. I'm gonna put the weight down here below so you guys can know. Uh, but yeah, this is a big setup. It's not a light lens. I know the G Masters, 
Uh, those are fairly light, they're big lenses, but this lens is big and it's also heavy. So I want it to go back to regular, double click, kind of tweaked out, but it's good. Uh, to set up your camera, you just come down to camera on the menu and you just go into it, so select what camera you have. So on here, I can actually, I think I need to do that. So I'm gonna do it. Oh, I, I didn't turn on the camera and that's why. So I just click uh, PC tether on this. So now I have the camera on here and I can actually come back here and I can play with the f-stop. And then if I wanna change, I could change the shutter speed. I could change the ISO and I can also hit record. So that's one of the coolest things is just being able to stop a take. Cause sometimes, especially like when you're in different modes, uh, this will even go down into under slowing mode. You see it barely misses. So, but it does work. So look at that able to get it like right there. Pretty crazy. Look at that. Insane. So I'll show some test footage of this because someone asked in a previous video. Um, but yeah, it does work. I wouldn't use the setup. Maybe I would, but uh, it doesn't have an autofocus. I'd rather have a little bit of autofocus in there. It's really nice that you're able to auto tune this, but because I used to have the Ronin and you used to have to go in the app and it was horrible syncing up to the app. I'm going to show you the app on this because the app is actually fire. You can actually do a lot of cool things with it. One cool thing as well is you can double click the left button. So that's actually gonna lock the control panel. So when you're operating, if you're hitting the buttons or something like that, you can easily stop that from happening by locking it. So I'm actually gonna pull up the app here. So I'm gonna go into the ZY Play app. You guys can download that as well. So the cool thing about this is uh, you can actually update it from the app. So that's pretty cool because before you used to have to plug it into the computer, I actually have an update, but I'm not gonna do it right now. So I'm gonna connect to the Weeble. So pretty cool. Oh, look, I can tilt, look at that. Crazy. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna double click to reset. Cool. Um, you can go through here, you can change some of the modes. So one cool thing is uh, on the app, I'm sure they'll update this soon. You can actually change the follow mode because follow mode is where you can tilt up and go left to right. So if you go into the app, you can actually turn on follow mode. So look at that. I'm not holding the trigger and I'm getting the tilt and follow. So that's one cool thing. I'm pretty sure they're gonna fix that in an update soon where you don't have to hold this trigger down. But yeah, so you can actually, you can access all the modes. You can actually hit record from here. Uh, you can zoom, you can move the camera as well. Turn it on like this and you can actually control the camera with your phone. And it's super responsive as you can see. Nice and slow. So I don't know what you'd use this for. Comment down below, let me know what you guys would use this for. I'm not really sure. Maybe like, I don't know if you're at like a wedding and like you're away from the camera and you need to like follow the bride and groom down the aisle, I don't know. You'd have to practice with it though because I don't know, I feel like I'm a little not very stable with it. I mean, it's crazy. Like, look, I can look up and I can just spin my phone. Like, this is crazy. Maybe I would do this on like a music video with like the glass platform and then I could just slowly rotate. So that's pretty much it for balancing your Weeble S. I hope you guys found this useful. Just keep playing around with it. Try some of the accessories they include as well. The plate riser, I didn't need it, uh, but some other cameras might. Uh, you can also throw the lens support on there as well. I'm gonna go read some comments from my last video from, we did a test with the probe lens, so make sure to go check that one out if you haven't. First comment was Jaden, he said, mostly I would use the macro lens for filming B-roll of very small things like bugs or dice. It'd definitely be cool to check out some bugs with that lens, that lens is a lot of fun. I definitely wanna use it on more projects. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video, make sure to go check it out, it was a lot of fun. Mino wanted to know, he said he loves it. GH5 or GH5S, what do you prefer? Next video, LOL. I actually have done a comparison video a while ago, but if you guys haven't noticed, I do own both. This is the GH5. I'm filming on the GH5S right now. And honestly, they're both great cameras. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. I like both of them, so that's why I own both of them. Um, I really like the IBIS in this one, but the ISO performance and the fact that it doesn't have IBIS is also useful as well. When you do gimbal or car mount shots or crazy handheld shots, 
like when you want a lot of energy, it doesn't look good with the IBIS. That's why I like the GH5S because it doesn't have IBIS and you can actually control the sensor more. I use that for majority of like gimbal type stuff, but this is great for photos, run and gun videos, uh, stuff like that. I mean, they're both great cameras. So I like both of them. It just depends on you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys wanna see some of my previous videos, check out some of them at the end of this video. Thanks for watching again. I'm Tyler Casey. I'll catch you guys next time.